I'm Karen Erlansky, Director of the Montgomery County Council's Office of Legislative Oversight, and I'm joined here this evening by a number of my OLO colleagues, Craig Howard, Sarah Downey, and Leslie Rubin. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the office, um, the one sentence version is that we conduct research, evaluation, policy, and budget-related projects at the request of the County Council. And in the past several years, we've been asked to do an increasing number of projects in the budget and fiscal area. Tonight, we're here to give you a 15-minute briefing on the report we recently completed on achieving a structurally balanced budget in Montgomery County. We undertook this project at the direction of the Council in two parts. In part one, we reviewed the spending and revenue trends of the past decade. In part two, we outlined options for achieving long-term fiscal balance. Before we delve into the report itself, I want to just take a few minutes up front to summarize the five points I recommend you take away as news from our presentation. First, the county faces a structural budget problem. This is because the projected growth in tax-supported revenue, at least for the foreseeable future, will not keep pace with the steadily rising costs of the county's spending commitments. And because the county must balance its budget, unless structural changes are made to the base of agency budgets, the county will likely face, find itself in the same position every year of identifying a gap that must be closed and then scrambling for solutions either on the revenue or spending side of the equation. Second, most of the county's tax dollars support the work of two agencies. The Montgomery County Public Schools and the county government together account for 91% of all tax-supported spending. Close to two-thirds of all agency employees work for the school system. Third, because government is a people-intensive business, it makes sense that the great majority of county funds is spent on human capital. The corollary to this, however, is that achieving substantial budget savings requires the county to reduce spending on personnel, and essentially there are two ways to do that. You either reduce the size of your workforce or you lower per employee costs. Fourth. The county has assumed certain commitments that will continue to grow even if employee pay remains entirely frozen and no services are added or expanded. These growing commitments include debt service, health insurance for active and retired employees, pension payments, and contributions to the county's fund reserves, all of which will continue to draw resources away from the possibility of new services to residents or compensation increases to employees. And last but not least, Please keep in mind that the cost pressures and difficult trade-offs facing Montgomery County are by no means unique. While the story in each state and local government across the country is slightly different, there are basic plot similarities. In other words, we are not alone. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to brief you on the first part of our report. I will present an overview of the first part of our study, which looked back at spending and revenue trends for fiscal years 2002 through 2011. This first slide shows that total tax-supported spending increased 59% over the past decade. The chart shows steady growth in the early part of the decade, with spending leveling off and then declining. For reference, please note that the inflation rate was 29% over the same time period, shown by the orange line, while the combined rate of growth for inflation and population was about 40% during the same time period, shown by the green line. The next two slides present macro views of how the county spends tax dollars. As you can see, two agencies account for 91% of government spending, MCPS at 57% and the county government at 34%. This next slide divides spending between personnel costs and operating expenses. Note that personnel costs, that is, dollars spent for employee salaries and benefits, account for 82% of combined agency spending. This is not surprising because most local government service delivery is done through government employees, such as public school teachers, police officers, and librarians. So if you want to hone in on what drives spending, you have to focus on the school system and county government, and you have to focus on personnel costs. 
On the topic of personnel costs, the next slide shows that these costs grew by 64% over the decade. While examining this data, we found something interesting. That is, that the size of the government workforce grew at a much slower rate than personnel costs. In fact, the number of government workers increased only by about 10% over the past decade, almost exclusively a result of new positions in MCPS and Montgomery College. What this tells us is that the primary driver behind the 64% growth in personnel costs was not a massive increase in workforce size, but rather large increases in the cost per employee. Next, let's look at revenue trends. The green line tracks revenue growth since fiscal year 2002 and shows particularly rapid growth, about 7.4% annually, from fiscal years 2003 through 2009. This growth was fueled by the rapidly expanding economy as well as tax rate increases and expansion of state aid. Now let's look forward. The county projects that revenue for the next five years will continue to grow, but at a much slower rate, about 2.7% annually. So now we see the first component of the budget challenge facing the county for the foreseeable future, namely that future revenues will not be sufficient to accommodate spending growth at the pace experienced during the previous decade. Now let's look more closely at the next five years. We will rescale the graph to focus on projected revenue through fiscal year 2016. The yellow line shows the amount of money expected to be available to the county in each of the next five years, assuming no change in tax rates. Now let's introduce a line showing future expenditures. The expenditure line in the chart assumes no new or expanded programs, no budget adjustments for po population or school enrollment growth, and no salary increases for government employees. Nonetheless, the chart shows expenditures exceeding revenue by 140 to $280 million in each of the next five years. So, why would there be a gap if revenues increase and government services and employee salaries remain constant? The answer lies within certain categories of spending that are projected to grow at a faster rate than revenue even without changes in service levels or salaries. The first of these spending categories is employee benefits, most notably retirement plans and health insurance for both current and retired employees. Costs for these benefits have risen steeply over the past decade and now consume about 585 million tax, tax dollars. More importantly, these costs are projected to grow by about 50% to $875 million by fiscal year 2016. Please note that these costs do not include the potential transfer of teacher pensions from the state to the county. Another spending category that is growing at a faster rate than revenue is debt service. Debt service is the annual cost of repaying borrowing used to finance the construction and renovation of schools, roads, and other public facilities. The yellow bars show the growth in debt service costs over the past decade. At our current rate of borrowing, these payments would increase by an additional 50% through fiscal year 2016, as shown in green. Finally, we have a series of policies intended to keep the county's fiscal house in order and help the county retain its current AAA bond rating. Appended to your handout is a copy of the council resolution adopting these policies. To comply with these policies, the county will have to set aside more money than it had in previous years. All told, these commitments for employee benefits, debt service, and fiscal policies consume about one-third of all county resources. Which brings us back to the mismatch between projected revenues and expenditures, even when assuming no new programs or salary increases. Of course, the county cannot run a deficit. Instead, the county faces the challenge of bringing revenue and spending into long-term alignment, which can only be accomplished by raising more revenue or by bending cost curves downward.